So, how do you picture an atom on your mind? Like this or like this? So in order for us to start our understanding of an atom and matter in general, we have to go back. I mean way back, thousands of years when scientists look like this. Dear students, when Greek philosophers, Leucippus and his pupil Democritus first came up with idea that, all matter was made up of these tiny indivisible particles. No one knows, how they developed this concept, but they just thought that, if you cut something in half enough times, eventually you reach a particle that can't be cut anymore. They proposed the Greek word atomos which means uncuttable, indivisible. Kids. The fact is atomic theory as we know it today is the product of hundreds, if not thousands of different insights. I want to explain how we know what we know about the atom today. The next major developments in atomic theory didn't come along for nearly 2,300 years. Move ahead several thousand years, it was around the first decade of the 19th century, that, a fella named John Dalton, who was a chemist and physicist of England, was successful in answering so many questions. And what he came up with was very similar to what, Democritus proposed. But he did so based on science, observation, experimentation and what he found so. He came up with several tenets, which is then known as the Daltonist atomic theory that held, for many numbers of years. With this theory many concepts regarding matter, composition of matter, atoms, and even combination of atoms resulting in compounds would better understood. Now as we continue to fast forward, we can see that Dalton was the beginning of evidence-based science. Okay. Let's first take a very quick look, at the six basic postulates of his theory. First, he said that matter is made up of very tiny particles called atoms, which are the indivisible building blocks of matter and cannot be destroyed or created in a chemical reaction. So what do we mean by this? Yes. It means that if we go on dividing matter in smaller sections, we get at the end the atoms. Also, in a chemical reaction, atoms may combine together to form new units. However, no new atoms can be created and existing ones can't be destroyed. So first postulate is very easy to understand. Secondly he suggested that all atoms of a given element are identical in mass and chemical properties. If we zoom into element A, we find all atoms making element A are just the same. And in what sense they are same? The atoms have identical mass, as well as chemical properties. And does this explains the third postulate too? Yes. Third postulate was that atoms of different elements have different masses and chemical properties. So are we able to notice that atoms in element A are different from those in element B? Absolutely. And in what aspect are they different? Masses and chemical properties. Similarly, fourth postulate states that atoms of different elements may combine with each other in a fixed, simple, whole number ratios to form compound. Now, what do we mean by this? You will not find half or three-fourths atom combining with the other. In case of water we always have two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom combining to form one unit. And in one unit of carbon dioxide, we have one atom of carbon, with two oxygen atoms. The same holds true for all compounds. And lastly the atom is the smallest unit of matter that can take part in a chemical reaction. Now let's see. There were few drawbacks of Dalton's theory as well. The indivisibility of an atom was proved wrong, an atom can be further subdivided into protons, neutrons, and electrons. However, an atom is the smallest particle that takes part in chemical reactions. According to Dalton, the atoms of same element are similar in all respects. However, atoms of some elements vary in their masses and densities. These atoms of different masses are called isotopes. For example, Chlorine has two isotopes with mass numbers 35 and 37. Students. Dalton all claimed that, atoms of different elements are different in all respects. This has been proven wrong in certain cases, argon and calcium atoms each have an atomic mass of 40. These atoms are known as isobars. Lastly. According to Dalton, 
atoms of different elements combine in simple whole number rate ratios to form compounds. But this is not observed in complex organic compounds like sugar etc. So, what have we learned since Dalton proposed his theory? The short answer is a lot. Despite caveats, Dalton's theory is still mostly true, and it forms the framework of modern chemistry. Thanks to Dalton, 